الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن شاء الله تعالى we'll continue with a hadith that Imam Rajab رحمه الله he added to the 40 hadith of Imam Nawi رحمه الله to make them 50 hadith and this is in the book of Imam Rajab رحمه الله uh, which is called Jami' Al-Uloom Al-Hikam Fi Sharhi 50 Haditham Min Jami' Al-Kalim In this beautiful book, Jami' Al-Uloom Al-Hikam Imam Rajab Rahim Allah He explained in them the 40 Haditham of Imam Nawi Then he added uh, a Hadith till 50 uh, That would make them 50 Hadith uh, With more of uh, you know general meanings of a Hadith With different subjects and uh, and these hadith again are um, comes under them many chapters of matters of knowledge uh, or foundations of uh, another or of subjects in matters of ilm of matters of fiqh or others and that's why it's very difficult to this explain hadith in all its details in one session but it's just um, basically just a key to what comes afterwards and that's something that a person can study in the subject of fiqh like this hadith that we're going to briefly very briefly inshallah ta'ala describe uh, the hadith number 43 as you see the hadith on the top here with the blue it says an ibn abbas radiallahu anhuma qal qal rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alhiqu alfara'idha bi ahliha fama abqati alfara'idhu fali awla rajulin dhakar Says Haraja uh, al Muslim. The hadith roughly means, and this is in the subject of inheritance, in the subject of inheritance and distributing the wealth of a person after he passes away. Uh, it says, Al Hiqu al Fara'id bi Ahliha, which means uh, make the Fara'id, and the Fara'id will talk about that. Fara'id is the plural of Fard, and Fard, as we know, is the meaning of obligation. But in the subject of inheritance, is basically what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it as an obligation to be given to certain heirs with specific percentages. And we'll talk about that briefly, inshallah ta'ala. So these fara'id, you give it to its people, bi'ahliha. Uh, so whoever deserves the half to be given the half, whoever deserves the third to be given the third, and so on. Uh, and he said after that, alayhi salatu wasalam, فَمَا أَبْقَتِ الْفَرَائِدْ what the fara'id left afterwards, that means the person died and he left, say, for example, a mother and uh, a daughter, for example. So the daughter gets one half, the mother gets one uh, third, for example. And then if there is anything left afterwards, this is basically what it means. After giving the fixed shares. So the fara'id, they call it fixed shares or obligations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it for the heirs, for specific heirs. Whatever is left afterwards, then it's to be given to the closest male to the deceased. The closest male to the deceased, male relative to the deceased, you get whatever is left. And this hadith is reported by Bukhari Muslim. As you see, the hadith is brief, but it basically gives the entire uh, subject of inheritance that is mentioned in verses of the Quran, hadith of the Prophet in very in very simple terms. And it's a chapter in fiqh, and it's important, for, of course, for someone to learn it and to be aware of all of these different rulings. And it's been all along in the Muslim world where when someone dies, that the judge, people will go to the judge and he would make the rulings of inheritance to make it, um, you know, um, fixed, uh, for people to take the inheritance according to the Sharia. Uh, so again, al bi-ahliha. The furud or these uh, fixed shares mentioned in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, they are one half and one fourth and one eighth and two thirds and one third and one sixth. These are the fara'id. And it's to be given to many different people according to uh, who's alive. And when a person dies, uh, the wealth that a person had 
as we know that it's to be inherited. And that's why this is something that a person will be asked about in the Day of Judgment. And there's a hadith of the Prophet there's no wasiyah to someone that inherits. If someone is going to inherit by the Book of Allah, as it's stated in the Quran and the Sunnah, then it's not permissible to write for them something extra or something else. They will get whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made as their share. So it's not permissible for a man to write in his will that his daughter gets this and his son gets this and you know more than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them or as it's, it's in the West, people would write a will because if they die, all of the wealth will go to one person or you know, so it's not a will really what they write down. It's basically they're writing the laws of inheritance mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in whatever shares that are mentioned. So if the mother gets one sixth, if the wife gets one eighth, things like this. But to make a wasiyah or a will for a person, to, for someone that is already going to inherit, the Prophet ﷺ, he said that Inna Allah a'ta kull haqqin haqqa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave everyone their rights, their share. فَلَا وَصِيَّةَ لِوَارِثِ No, no will to be given in, in your will to a warith, to an heir that is already going to inherit. So uh, going to the details of these things, it needs time, of course, and sessions after session. Inshallah, we'll do that, inshallah ta'ala. This is part of the plan is to, uh, you know, fully, inshallah ta'ala, uh, explain the laws of inheritance. And it's like a... Um, uh, involves a lot of math and it's uh, usually many many cases that can be uh, figured out uh, in which a person would think if a person dies and these are the people that are left these are the heirs who gets what this is all based on the fixed shares and the uh, uh, other things like the asaba for example like the male relatives that are related to the person without any female in between uh, they get their shares of inheritance without a fixed share. Like the son, for example. The son does not get a fixed share, does not get half or fourth or one half and so on. He gets uh, what's left after given to those who uh, inherit with fixed shares. The son, for example, gets what's left and to the son gets double what the daughter gets. Uh, with other details, of course, because uh, the son uh, also, there's, some, uh, there's a subject called al-hajb. Some people, they uh, basically deprive, if it's correct to say, others from inheritance because of their existence, because they're alive. So, for example, the brother, the, if a person died and he has a, bro a son and a brother, the brother does not get anything because of the presence of the son. The son deprives the the brother for example from inheriting and from the you know things like this so uh, with many different details but again the hadith says al al faraid wa bi so the faraid is as we heard these are the shares that are mentioned in the quran one half one fourth one eighth two thirds one third one sixth and it's to be given to its people it's to be given uh, to its people and its people are mentioned also in the quran Clearly, the father, the mother, the sister, uh, the the brothers also that are mentioned with fixed uh, shares. The wife, uh, the daughter, she gets also part of those who inherit with fixed shares if it's females uh, and things like this. Uh, and after giving all of the, uh, the ones that would inherit with fixed shares, then if there is anything left, then it's to be given to the closest male relatives as the Prophet ﷺ, he said. So if, uh, you know, and I'm not sure how much level of details that we need to go through, uh, but the simple uh, case where, for example, someone died and he, had, and he left, say, for example, a wife and sons and daughters. Uh, then we look, does he have parents or not? Because the parents, they have a fixed share and they are not to be deprived from inheritance. Right? So say, for example, he doesn't have a mother or a father, then the wife will get one-eighth because he has children. And then the rest is to be distributed uh, for the sons and the daughters 
two shares for the male and one for the female. This is only for the you know sons and daughters. But there's other things that, again, of course, if a person doesn't have sons and daughters and you have mothers and fathers, or mother and a father, and you know the father will take whatever is left with the ta'asib, and he would inherit with ta'asib. Ta'asib is that he would take whatever is left. And the asaba, or this comes from the asaba, the male relatives that are related to the deceased without a female in between. And there is the subject of who deprive who. Right, so the closest deprives the one that is further away, if they are from the same uh, branch of inheritance. Right, so uh, if a person, if if a if a full brother would inherit, then his son would not inherit. You know things like this. Uh, so uh, this is with regards to the furud, and the furud again, what came clearly in the Quran and in the Sunnah that they would inherit with the fixed shares. Right, so if there is a, a person died and he has a daughter, for example, she gets one half. This one half is a fixed share that is clearly mentioned in the texts, right? And then uh, the left, whatever is left, if that's what if the only one that inherits from him, is to be given to the closest male relative if there is no one else, right? And uh, if there's two daughters, they get two thirds. And things like this. So this is something that needs to be studied. And there are many different subjects with also the asaba and the different types of ta'sib. But then the second part of the hadith, فَلِأَوْلَ رَجُلٍ ذَكَرْ أَوْلَ means closest. Right? When they say so and so, yali so and so, that means he comes after him. Right? So uh, this is, it does not mean, because the word awla can give the meaning of the one that has more rights. Uh, it, it, gets that, it gives that meaning linguistically. But here it doesn't mean that, but it means the closest male relative to the deceased. So, for example, if the person died and he left um, sons of brothers, he has brothers, uh, and the brothers died and they had sons, right? Uh, and these brothers, they were full brothers to him, you know, from the same mother and father. And then also he had uh, there's uh, maternal brothers and paternal brothers, and they have also sons and daughters. And all of the brothers died, but these are the ones that are present, or cousins, you know, who are the closest after giving all the, the fixed shares to the inheritors, right? The closest to him are the full brothers in this case. The full brothers are the closest to him. Right, if they were alive, right. If not, then they go to the next that is closer to him. So, uh, and this is, has some differences of opinions with with matters like this, but it's the first one that takes. So, uh, and the and the asaba comes from the the the, the son, the sons being the, the closest asaba uh, or male relatives to the deceased, and then the father, then the grandfathers. Uh, then uh, after that the brothers and the grandfathers goes with the brothers then the uh, the cousin or the the uncles from the from the father's side so um, uh, and so th therefore the full brothers comes closer than the paternal brothers because they are closer from both sides from the father and the mother's side different than someone is a brother from the father's side only so he's closer to him so this is, a, you know, what the Prophet ﷺ said, the closest male relatives that's after giving all of the different fixed shares to those who inherit with fixed shares. And there's no one would inherit with ta'asib. That means he would get whatever is left, like a son, like a, a father, you know, uh, like that. And if there's still some shares left, then it's to be given to the closest. Uh, and that can, again, also have uh, so many details. Um, and there are things that, you know, deprives the person from inheriting, whether it's differences in religion or if someone kills someone, for example, uh, or uh, someone is alive, so he would deprive someone that is further away from the deceased. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll stop at this point with just the, the hadith uh, describing it in general terms like this. 
and uh, for hoping inshallah ta'ala that we would inherit or that we would uh, study the inheritance in details with many different subjects of it and it needs patience because it's uh, it's uh, it's many different subjects in it and people explain it in many different ways uh, but to be patient to learn the different fixed shares and who inherit all the different shares of the different situations some people they study it and by the shares itself so they take the one half who inherits one half one two three four and so on in many different cases uh, and then who inherits two thirds and so on and another way to study it is to take the fixed shares, those who inherit with fixed shares, shares like the, uh, the wife, the father, the mother, the, uh, the daughters, and so on. So, so to take them, to list them, and to talk about all the different situations. When does the father uh, inherit one-sixth? When, do, when does he inherit one-sixth plus whatever is left? Uh, you know, things like this. Depends on who's alive and who's dead. That's in every case. And then so to talk about specific subjects, like the subject of the ta'asib, the male relatives, uh, and then to, to talk about those who deprive who, and what happens when there's everybody takes their share and there's still money left, as this hadith describes it. Or if the share becomes more than what the, the number one, like if someone inherits one half, and one inherits one third, one inherits one uh, sixth, and one eighth. So how can you do that? Because all of the, the different shares becomes more than one then you have to downgrade the calculation so that it becomes uh, less than number one so that everybody would get a share. So many different things, and it's amazing, it's a miraculous thing in the rulings of the Deen of Islam that all of these details rulings comes in, in, in the mention of it in few verses in the Quran. Uh, so inshallah ta'ala, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us life, we'll talk about that subject in details in the subject of fiqh inshallah. I would uh, have to leave now, inshallah ta'ala, to, uh, to make it for the salah. So we'll continue, inshallah, next time. And again, inshallah, we'll, we'll try to figure out a time where we can uh, make a course uh, separate for uh, the matters of inheritance, inshallah, because of the need of it. But this uh, it should be a serious one where people have to take notes. And uh, the notes are more important than the book. That we would study from inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Barakallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.